Okay, so you probably remember this. Today, we're making 2.5 Pro even better by introducing a new mode we're calling Deep Think. Deep Think uses our latest cutting edge research in thinking and reasoning, including parallel techniques. So far, we've seen incredible performance. It gets an impressive score on USAMO 2025, currently one of the hardest maths benchmarks. Okay, so the model is finally out. You will be able to access it in Gemini app. So if you click on Deep Think, you will be able to use it. Now, this is different from the normal Gemini 2.5 Pro. Uh, it's going to take a lot longer. I had access to the model for quite a bit. So I'm going to first show you some of the outputs, then we'll talk about some of the intended use cases, and then later on some technical details. Okay, so here's one output. Uh, it was a simulation of celestial bodies. The good thing is that the model actually follows the instructions that you provide to it. Now, here's another example of it following instructions. Uh, so this is a landing page for a SaaS. It added these really neat animations. Also, it added the ability to switch between dark and light mode, right? And when you hover on these buttons, it added these pretty cool animations in here. So now this is a really good example of it following user instructions. However, I don't think that this is the intended use case of this model. And before looking at some intended use cases, in my opinion, let's look at this example of it solving a four disk tower of Hanai problem. Usually it's able to solve it within a 15 moves. Now, any model which is able to implement recursion correctly should be able to solve problems like these. But this model is intended for problems that are hard to solve. One example of hard to solve problems are going to be something like International Mathematics Olympiad, which was recently conducted. Gemini with Deep Think officially achieved a gold medal by solving five out of six problems. Now, OpenAI was also able to achieve a gold medal by solving five out of six problems. And since they used a version of Gemini with Deep Think, I thought this would be a good test to see whether this version can solve it. So I took this problem, which is problem number, number one, and gave it to Gemini Deep Think. Now, it shows you a summary of its chain of thought, which is pretty cool. You can learn a lot from this. Even though I have a PhD in machine learning, I'm not going to pretend I'm able to solve these mathematics Olympiad problems, but we can look at the final output. And the final output based on the solution that is provided is actually correct. So here's the actual solution. So I copied the problem and solution and asked uh, Opus 4. Now in this case, Opus also agrees that this is a high quality solution that successfully solves the challenging uh, combinatorial geometry problem. So I'm happy with the response. Then I took problem number six. Now this is the problem which both Gemini and OpenAI model failed to solve. In this case, it attempted to create a solution. So it came up with a solution. I'm not sure whether it's correct or not. OpenAI says that their model actually said that it cannot solve that problem. So again, I asked Opus 4, in this case, of Opus 4 says the solution is correct, but has significant gap. It correctly identifies the answer as this, but relies on citing an unproved theorem for general lower bound. Now, as I said before, I'm in no position to say whether it's correct or not, but these are the type of problems you could use Gemini 2.5 Pro Deep Think. And let me show you one other use case that uh, I personally found very helpful. So currently I'm looking at this a software package called Pocket Flow, which implements an LLM framework within 100 lines. And it's a very neat implementation of something like LangChain. Uh, it has almost all the features that you would need for an LLM framework, but they implemented it within 100 lines. Now, 100 lines sounds awesome, but that also means there are going to be a number of different gaps. I took the code base of 100 lines along with documentation and provided it to Deep Think and asked it to first try to understand what this does, then identify gaps and issues and help me improve on those. So here's a quick chain of thoughts. It says, I have been meticulously dissecting the pocket flow code base and it's a compiling blog post. My focus is thoroughly grasping the core concepts, right? So it correctly identifies 
these core concepts in here, right? And then it starts looking at different issues. So for example, exploring scalability issues, re revisiting state management, right? Addressing the shallow copy issues. And at the end, it came up with a really nice analysis. For example, what are the limitation? So there's a critical concurrency flaw blocking synchronous code in async flows. So the type of things that is going to limit the scalability of this awesome package. Now it's great because it uses parallel stream of chain of thoughts, uh, which is going to be uh, extremely useful for hard analysis like this. And then I asked it to actually implement the code based with all the different changes. Now I have been testing the improvements that it produced with another unreleased model. And in another conversation, these two models go back and forth and, uh, and improve on each other's outputs, which has been a very interesting experience to see. I'll probably share this in another video, but at the end, it implemented a code base that is a lot more robust compared to the initial implementation. Now, one last example of the type of things you probably want to do with deep things. I found this prompt on X. So it's like, assume humanoid robots begin mass production in 2026 at 100,000 units annually, doubling output each year until reaching a run rate of 1 billion units. And then we want to do an analysis of what is going to be the impact of this uh, on economics, GDP, growth rate, inflation, and so on and so forth, right? Let's first start thinking about uh, what are going to be the economics impact then it tries to analyze. This is the chain of thought. And this is a good thing from Google because they are exposing a, a sum, at least a summarized version of the chain of thoughts. In an ideal world, as a developer, I would love to have the raw chain of thoughts. Sometimes it's a lot more interesting to look at the chain of thoughts than the final output because you can learn a lot from how these models reason internally. Anyways, so based on that, it came up with a very comprehensive analysis. For example, here are some projections that it came up with all the way going up to uh, 2040. So phase one is going to be inflammatory uh, capex boom. So there's going to be some macro dynamics, then uh, there should be some policy responses, both from the government and central banks. The next phase is potentially uh, radical cost collapses and liquidity traps because the prices are going to decrease substantially. Uh, and I think uh, according to this, it's going to have an impact on both borrowing and investment. Then hyperabundance in the new normal. So annual robot production exceeds 100 million, passing 1 million by 2040. Uh, macro dynamics are going to be the economy is characterized by material abundance, but the traditional labor for wages models is obsolete for large segment of population creating a crisis in the distribution of purchasing power, deflation stabilizes at a persistent minus 5%. And then it talks about what should be the responses. So for example, it talks about fiscal dominance, the need for UBI or citizen dividends and monetary financing, right? So I think you can potentially use these deep reasoning models for thought experiments like these. In this section, we're going to look at some of the technical details. So. This is Gemini 2.5 Deep Think. It's going to be available to Gemini Ultra subscribers. Now, this is not the same model that got uh, the gold uh, at IMO, but it's actually a variation of that model that can still get to up, up to the bronze level performance on the same benchmark. It's still an experimental model. The actual model that got gold is going to be available to select mathematicians and academics. But let's see how exactly does this work. So they're using something called parallel thinking time. So they say deep think pushes the frontier of thinking capabilities by using parallel thinking techniques. This approach lets Gemini generates many ideas at once and consider them simultaneously, even revising or combining different ideas over time before arriving at the best answer. So it's not just a single chain of thought. It produces multiple different solutions or chain of thoughts. And then the interesting thing is that it can revise and even combine different ideas over time. And that's why it takes a lot of time, 
compared to any other thinking models. So they say by extending the inference time or thinking time, we give Gemini more time to explore different hypotheses and arrive at creative solution to complex problems. And they have also implemented novel reinforcement learning techniques that enables this deep thinking time. And you will notice the performance improvement in selected problems, which actually needs a lot more exploration. So one of them is iterative development and design. So the, these seems to be different design variations based on this prompt by Gemini 2.5 Flash, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and Gemini 2.5 Deep Think. And since this needs iterative refinements, it seems like Gemini Deep Think is able to generate a much better solution. Similarly, for scientific and mathematical discovery and algorithmic development and code, Gemini Deep Think will be a good option. And that's why I think you want to use this for the hardest problem. It's not a general purpose model. So some uh, reasoning and coding benchmarks. And it does uh, perform uh, much better compared to other models that are available. Uh, recently, Humanities Last Exam has been getting a lot of attention on that Gemini 2.5 deep think is state of the art at 34.8%. The next one is Grok 4 uh, with 25.4%. However, if you look at Grok 4 Heavy with Python plus internet, then it gets up to 44.4%. I don't think Gemini 2.5 Deep Think was using internet and other tools. So probably that's why they are comparing it directly to Grok 4. For code generation on LiveBunch, again, it's state of the art close to 88%, which is the new best score on this specific benchmark. For reference, Grok4 Heavy with Python gets about 80%, and Grok4 get that 79%, and that's listed here. So it seems like DeepMind is comparing DeepThink directly with Grok4, not with Grok4 Heavy, with tools. And since this is not the version that got the gold medal, uh, on IMO 2025, it gets about 61%, which will make it a candidate for a bronze medal. On AMI 2025, it gets about 99.2%. I think Grok4 Heavy with Python tools already saturated this specific benchmark. When I was testing this model, I saw some refusals, and they actually highlight those in this. So it's the same. They continue to build safety and responsibility into Gemini throughout the training and development lifecycle. In testing, Gemini 2.5 DeepThink demonstrated improved content safety and tone objectivity compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro, but did have a higher tendency to refuse benign requests. And this is something I have personally noticed during my testing. The easiest way is just rephrase your prompt in the same chat session and usually it works. So it's going to be available to the ultra subscribers on Gemini app. Uh, it's still an experimental version, but it's really great to see the boundary of innovation that is being pushed by these model creators. Specifically, I think we are now looking at new innovations that are going to be powered by generative AI, maybe not LLMs, but a variation of them. And I think we might see uh, similar models coming up from other providers as well. So do let me know what is your experience with Gemini Deep Think uh, and how does it compare to other models that you have access to. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.